Now let me discuss the second E, which stands for ethics. Every profession has a code of ethics. All these codes, or canons, as we prefer to call them in the legal profession, are in turn based on character ethic, on old-fashioned principles like integrity, courage, prudence, and hard work. These are some of the basic norms that must be internalized as the primary sources of true success and enduring happiness. All great persons, heroes, and saints have integrated such principles deep within themselves and have depended on them in times of stress and crisis. I must, however, distinguish ethical values from image-building tactics. Nowadays, we frequently hear of public personalities who are advised to change their image to win elections and public acceptance. And so, they employ public relations experts, or so-called spin masters, who manipulate and sometimes deceive others to promote their clients' interests. Such duplicity is fundamentally flawed. It cannot be the source of success, as people will eventually see through it. Truth will always triumph, and deception will be discovered and condemned. At the very least, those who seek recourse to it know that they are not what they pretend to be. Hence, they feel hollow and cheap. In the language of the young, they are plastic. Indeed, to change society, to change our government, what we need is not just a change of leaders, but a change in leaders. A change in person is possible only if they accept and practice these ethical values. If they begin to change from inside their hearts, if they change their own habits and embrace ethical principles and values. In the final analysis, what we are communicates far more eloquently than anything we say or do. In the words of Emerson, what you are shouts so loudly in my ears, I cannot hear what you say. Indeed, a swindler cannot talk about integrity, neither can the worldly teach about the contemplative life, nor can the godless preach about the experience of faith. There are people we trust because we know their character, because we know them to be honest, fair, and gentle. They may not speak eloquently, be familiar with public relations techniques, or know how to polish our egos, but we trust them because they have integrity and fidelity. Finally, lawyers must set their sight beyond the here and now to the hereafter and forever. They must prepare for the third key, which is eternity. Allow me to lay, relate my own personal experience. As Dean Bautista said, I was born and reared poor. While other kids my age were being acquainted with God and taught the sacraments in their religion classes, as most of you were probably in your grade school, I was attending public elementary and high schools, schools where religion was not taught. From there, I enrolled in a non-sectarian university. My education was purely secular. Hence, I have no catechetical background. My personal and close introduction to God came rather late in my life, only a little more than 20 years ago. But after finding the Lord, I realized the need to set my vision for eternity. I discovered the reality of spiritual laws, 
just as there are consequences for the violations of human and physical laws, there are penalties for the transgressions of God's commands. Thus, when we violate the Ten Commandments or the teachings of our Lord Jesus, our spirits suffer the consequence of being done for eternity. The Lord, however, gives us opportunities for reparation. We receive salvation from our sins through three R's, repentance, restitution, and reformation. Just and principled actions, though, should be done in the here and now. Before we can hope for everlasting happiness, we need to cleanse ourselves first of deliberate defiance of spiritual laws or belated compliance with them. Never for a moment believe that our lives on earth are the only ones we have been gifted with. Rather, believe that there is life after death, that there is eternity where our final destiny lies. Friends, let me assure you, God watches over all of us and awaits us in the great beyond. We may not see or hear Him, but He is present here today. He is amongst us, above us to inspire us, before us to lead us, beside us to guide us, behind us to protect us, and within us, in our hearts and in our spirits, to protect, to possess us, and to bring us to his everlasting kingdom. As I conclude, let me go back to the Jesuits, to their maxim, Ad Majorem Dei Gloriam, which is often abbreviated as AMBG. You all know that this abbreviation means for the greater glory of God. This motto is the Ignatian way of reminding us to dedicate to God everything we are and we do. When we invoke this phrase, we make a commitment to serve and glorify God. Not being Jesuit trained, I have my own version of AMBG, which is triple E, or the three is. I bring glory and praise to our God by living a, a life dedicated to excellence, ethics, and eternity. And so, my dear graduates, if my message of 20 or so minutes this afternoon can be reduced to a single sentence, it is this. Now, prepare intensely for the bar examinations. Thereafter, beyond the bar, prepare even more fervently to cherish a life worth living by constantly and conscientiously internalizing and practicing the e-values of excellence, ethics, and eternity. Maraming salam. Oh. <laughs>